Hey what is up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Unity tutorial here on the channel. So in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys the basics of the on trigger enter, on trigger stay and on trigger exit voids in Unity. So if you do enjoy this tutorial or you do find it helps you out a bunch, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more and let's get right into this. So first off I just do want to mention that yes I am using my voice. I don't really use my voice in my videos that much just because it's just easier for me personally to just use text in my videos. And uh, yeah, so anyways, how about now we uh, get right into this and I explain how this all works. So first up we have the on trigger enter void. So, oh wait, first up, first up before I do actually get into this guys, um, I, I just do want to say uh, if you are new around here and you don't know how to make a C sharp script, because you're probably looking at this thinking like, uh, okay, how do I do this? If you're new around here, you probably don't know. So um, what you do is when you're in a Unity uh, project, right, you go into your project folder here and then you just right click and you go create and then C sharp script and then boom you just click that name your script and then you double click on it to open it and yeah and also when uh, making a script as well you want to make sure that you have a IDE as they're called to uh, you know script in because otherwise you can't open up the script properly so what I use for example is Visual Studio when you get Unity um, I'm pretty sure every uh, install of Unity comes with Visual Studio, so you should already have it most likely, but uh, if you don't, be sure to install Visual Studio since it will help out a bunch. But anyways, uh, all that beginner stuff aside, uh, if you're someone who's been around here for a while, you would already know that, but that's just for beginners. So anyways, now back onto this. So, for the on trigger enter void, uh, as the name implies, when an object enters a trigger, an event will play. And then with the on trigger stay void, when you have an object which is staying in a trigger, an event will continuously play. And then when an object exits the trigger for the on trigger exit void, an event will play for that. So yeah, it's pretty easy to understand. And uh, now I'm just going to explain like how this code works and how you can use it for your own games, etc. So let's get into that. So first up, we have the first line here for the on trigger enter void, which says void on trigger enter, and then in brackets collider other. So what the other indicates is the other object that is involved with the collision. And then you have if other dot compare tag player. So what this indicates here is if the other object that is involved in the collision is tagged as player, then the event will happen. Now I'm pretty sure if you don't use this if tag, um, you know, if you just use uh, void on trigger enter collider other, pretty much any object that enters the trigger will cause the event to happen. So if you just want it to be like that, then you can. But if you want it to be as in, you know, you just have a particular uh, object tagged as something that you want to cause the event to happen, you can do that as well. So for example, here I have the player. And uh, if you want to have it as anything else, like let's say for example, you have something tagged as gobby dobby or something like that, you can do that too. So um, yeah, um, just anything like that. And I don't even think it has to be based on the object's tag as well. I think you can also do on trigger enter with like the, uh, you know, just the name of an object, for example. So it doesn't even have to be the tag, I think. Uh, it can be the name of an object you can get it by. <laughs> but anyways, um, usually what I always do is just tags. So yeah. But now we have the on trigger stay void. So yeah, uh, you know, if the other object is tagged as player or any tag you want, then as that object stays in the trigger, an event will continuously happen. And then, yeah, um, I think you guys will already pretty much all understand this now. I've pretty much uh, explained it all pretty well, actually, I think. So, yeah, what I'm going to be doing for the purpose of this tutorial is when the player enters the trigger, there will be a debug log that plays, which just says entered trigger. And uh, then when we do the on trigger stay, it will be staying in trigger, it says. So this debug log will continuously show up as we stay in the trigger. And we exit the trigger, it will be exited trigger instead of staying in trigger. Boom. Alrighty, so that's our basic script for that. Uh, you, you can do other events other than this, of course. Like if you want to have an uh, object appear or whatever, you can do that. So yeah. Yeah. 
Alrighty, so now that we've got that done, how about now we actually uh, get to doing some insane stuff. So, as you guys can see, by the way, um, I don't think I mentioned this at the start of the tutorial, but yeah, I am in the tutorial uh, scene which I used for my weapon projectile tutorial. If you haven't seen that, be sure to go watch that, because I teach you guys how to make a projectile-based weapon, and if you're someone who wants to learn how to do that for an FPS game, it might be useful for you, so yeah. Anyways, now let's get out a game object. I'm going to get out a cube. Alrighty. So here we have our cube. Now, I'm going to leave the mesh renderer on. Usually with triggers, I always turn off the mesh renderer so then it doesn't show. But I am going to leave it on just for the purpose of this tutorial so we know where our trigger is exactly. And uh, when we're entering and staying in it and exiting it. So yeah, I'm just going to increase this size a bit. Alright, so now what you want to do is you want to make sure that the trigger of yours is tagged as a trigger. I mean, not tagged as a trigger, but just checked as a trigger. You know, you got to make sure that on your uh, object's collider, you know, you, tech, you, you, blah, you check is trigger. So you just tick that, is trigger, and boom. And then you want to drag your script. So we won't need to put any variables into this, since we're not using variables for this script. But um, if you are, then yeah, be sure to fill in your variables. So now, uh, we can test this out. Well, actually first, no we can't, because I need to teach you guys something else. So with the other object that enters your trigger, right, there's a few things that you need to make sure of first. The first thing is that, of course, that object has a collider, and the next thing, of course, is that that object is tagged as that particular thing. So if I, say, for example, with my player, I want my player to enter this trigger and cause an event to happen, right? So I want to make sure that my player is tagged as a player. And then also uh, your capsule collider, well, whatever collider you're using, I'm just using capsule collider here. You want to make sure you have a collider. And um, in particular with uh, players, actually, if they've already got a character controller um, component, I don't think they'll actually need a collider since the character controller already counts as a collider. But yeah. And then you also want to make sure you have a rigid body on your object tagged as, you know, whatever it is. So yeah, just make sure you have all that stuff. Um, that's all important, otherwise this won't work. And yeah. And now we can test it out. So let's test this. Just firing a couple shots there. Alrighty, so um, when we enter this trigger, what's going to happen is we're going to see some stuff. So yeah. Boom, we've entered the trigger. And as you can see in the bottom left, it says staying in trigger. And uh, you probably noticed as well when entering the trigger, it didn't say entered trigger. And that's just because, you know, the frames are going by so fast that when we enter the trigger, that's already like one frame passed by and you know based on your frame rate then yeah you probably won't see the entered trigger line but it did happen so then when you exit the trigger it will say exited trigger as you guys can see there and then when we enter again it says staying in trigger so yeah and for proof that the entered trigger line does work i will show you guys so if we go into the console uh let's scroll all the way up to the top here when we first enter the trigger and as you can see, it says at this particular time, we entered the trigger, and then we were staying in the trigger for a certain amount of time. And then at some point, we probably then exited and then entered back in, and then it would have showed up again. And yeah, look, you guys get it. But yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much how that works. Something else I do want to mention as well is uh, when testing this as well, if you do want to test it the same way I am with the debug logs, be sure to uh, go into your console and disable these, uh, you know, cautionary uh, sign things, you know, giving you the errors and stuff, just in case any of them might pop up. Uh, so yeah, just so then you can actually see your debug lines, and yeah, they're not being covered by the errors and cautions and whatever. So yeah. So anyways, that there is like the basics of on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. So, you know, in conclusion, when you enter a trigger, uh, an event will play. When you stay in a trigger, an event will play. And when you exit a trigger, an event will play. So yeah, that's basically how the uh, on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit voids work. And uh, hopefully you guys understood the scripting as well. I tried to explain it as good as possible. And yeah, and also just as well, be sure to let me know if you want me to use my voice more in my videos. Yeah, it was fun just explaining with my voice today how to do things. I feel like it's just more natural. If you guys like that, be sure to let me know. Um, I don't know if I'll do it for my larger tutorials since it's just easier for me to use text in them. Since I feel like I'll be stuffing up when I'm trying to talk more. But yeah, um, anyways guys, uh, sorry for rambling on, but thanks again for watching. 
and uh, yeah, uh, if you did learn something, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.